All right, I'm going to go ahead and share screen here and uh, start off with this. So, um, um, basically, a common sense approach is what this is regarding. And it's, it's, if you were to step outside in the winter, how would you dress for the winter? You'd wear a coat, jacket, boots, that, all that. Similar thing with fire. Um, you see constantly people on the uh, news that are interviewed in wildfire areas. And I like to pick on Southern California because it's always a guy in a garden hose with sandals and a t-shirt and shorts on that's going to defend his home. And meanwhile, the fire is approaching rapidly through the chaparral. Um, so I came up with this to try to share with um, people that are not fire service personnel. And that's, that's my background. I um, have a long career and I'm retired now. Um, personal protective clothing equipment. I'm going to go through this and it may be a little bit fast, but it is available on the website under educational resources. Uh, this is, I have an updated version here, which I'll put in uh, that uh, Jeff Peach can, can load up and uh, you can access that later to go over something. If I have enough time this evening and people have questions, we can go back to one of the pages, but I'm going to go through it a little bit quick. So just bear with that. Um, all right. In uh, wildfire evacuation, there, there's obviously multiple threats. So this, this picture here I chose because it's an excellent shot of vehicles driving through an ember stream and, and a fire that's obviously moving through the area as they're evacuating or as they're trying to go from one point to another. And their, their safety is obviously at, at risk here. Um, the, the thing that we think about with vehicles, and I know um, one of our other uh, presenters this evening is going to get into this probably, um, but vehicles run on oxygen just like people do. If you get into an environment that's less than 16% oxygen, that vehicle may quit working. Um, our, our fuel injected vehicles seem to do better now than the old carbureted versions, that, that, um, but be, be aware of that. If you see heavy, dense smoke and you drive into that area, it's possible your, your vehicle could stall. So just keep that in mind. But the main thing is that your ability to, to stay calm, to uh, think clearly, be, be able to react appropriately when you, when you can't, and this is your physiological response, when you can't breathe, see clearly, you're getting embers in your eyes, you, you're, you're looking for temporary safety refuge, and if you have to leave your vehicle or your residence, and the fire is moving rapidly through the area you're in, um, the idea is that you're prepared for that. Um, so during evacuation, you can encounter these conditions and threats are dangerous to life and health. There are multiple threats, and that's, that's a list there. And, and you, you, if, you're, if you're prepared to face that hostile and life-threatening environment, during exposure to high ambient temps, over 100, 100 degrees, plus the heat of the fire, um, which is convected heat. Now, direct flame contact, you're in serious trouble if that's happening with you. But generally, it's heavy smoke, hot objects, searing hot air that yeah. you're breathing now. Um, you, you can create difficulty breathing. You have embers of firebrands, ash, dust, blind debris, um, um, and, and among other things. Um, Okay, so just in, in talking about these items, these are things that you need to think about that you can encounter uh, personally. All right. Yeah, it's gonna roll a little fast. All right, the uh, personal protective clothing and equipment. We, we've gone through this with COVID, what everybody thinks of as personal protective uh, gear, such as face masks and gloves and wash your hands. This is different. It's, it's, it's about, what we can wear, the attire, and basically you could go from, from top to bottom, from head to toe, is how I approach it, um, to talk about these things. Headwear, have a hat, and I show a leather hat in the middle because leather is what? It's, it's pretty much flame resistant, it, it'll, it'll last. It's also usually a little stiffer, it won't, it won't crush down in a breeze. I'm showing other hats or examples of them that have um, neck um, protection, which is made for sun, right? And some of these hats are probably synthetic, which you don't want. You, you, you're much better off with other materials, and we'll go into that in a minute. Um, the reason for neck protection is that embers are going to get in your collar. If you, if you turn your back to the fire and you're in an ember stream where you're getting a lot of them blowing in, and they, they'll burn you. They'll, get, they'll start burning your clothing, little holes in your clothing. You'll, you'll, get, you'll be very irritated by it because it hurts when, it, when the ember lands inside your, your uh, neck and gets down your collar. So have some way of protecting your, your, your head and neck. And, and the other thing is a wide brim hat allows you maybe a better ability to, uh, to, to stave off some heat if you have to put your head down towards a radiant heat source. Um, as firefighters, we wear helmets and that's what they do. Face shields, helmets, goggles, things like that really protect you from, from radiant heat. 
Sure. Okay, so obviously the best protection is going to be a helmet of some type. If you have a construction helmet, or you can even buy these online, but not everybody needs to have one. A hat will do fine if it's the right kind. Um, and, and the goggles, the reason, the reason I show goggles is like it, it's something that's, if it's padded and enclosed, smoke's not going to get in your eyes. And, and not being able to see is, is not good. If you have to leave your vehicle, you're leaving your house, and you're in that environment that's coming down upon you, being able to see is an important thing. The other is respiratory protection. And we all know everybody probably has some kind of mask now, whether it's an N95 mask or other type, or the one you see the, the wildlife firefighters wearing the, uh, like the Respro or the, the Bandit. There's other, there's other ones out there um, that do a very good job of, car of filtering carbons. So you, you might not be as likely to get a headache later if you're exposed to a high carbon environment like carbon monoxide. In the photo, this, this photo is from Australia. It was last year during their brush fires. And this is kind of an example. They're wearing masks to protect their breathing, but you'll see how they're dressed, this mother and her child. And if you look at the sky, it's orange. They're in trouble. <laughs> you see an orange sky. That, that, that fire is pretty close to be creating that type of environment where the sun's blocked out and, you're, and you've got this filtered light coming through. Um, but they should, the, the, the child's in a tank top and she's wearing like some kind of a t-shirt or tank top type also. So they're obviously just having to leave quickly and didn't think about what to wear. So then they're outdoors right now where they're probably going to their vehicle or somewhere else. But that's that's an interesting photo because it, it shows both uh, conditions, the respiratory protection and the way they're dressed. Um, trying to get this thing to roll. Okay, the other going, going down, you know, hands, your body protection, any pair of gloves will do that's leather being the best. Um, the wrist cover because you, you want you want some protection if your sleeves are, are uh, open up or, or short, you don't have time to button them or something. Um, those are North Star, the wildland gloves, those are the best, but you know it's like having five thumbs. The dexterity is not real good. So if you're, if you're getting your car and you've got gloves on, you're gonna have to take them off to, to take care of um, the ergonomics in your vehicle and, and, and driving. Um, and as we go down, the other thing, some upper body protection, long sleeve shirt. I show a Nomex shirt in the center there. It's a Cal OSHA um, required one for uh, firefighters. It's a type. Um, they're single layer. Uh, Nomex will, it can kind of potato chips when it gets hot and burns, but it doesn't continue to burn, it self extinguishes. Heavy cotton's good, it will burn, but it's, it's comfortable if you're in that. And the other thing is wear two layers. Have a t-shirt on or undergarment and, and try to layer up because it's the air layers between the garments that keep the heat off your skin. Um, and yeah, you're probably going to sweat, but once you get in your vehicle, you have the chance to throw on the air conditioner or you're waiting in your home, you can certainly AC. Um, leather's very good, um, uh, but it's heavy and it's hot. So the amount of time your exposure in a hot environment, you have to kind of think of what your own health requirements are for your ability to withstand uh, heat. And you don't want to be, you don't want to suffer heat exhaustion at the same time you're trying to uh, evacuate. Um, the uh, wool is inherently flame resistant. And, and I, I put seven and a half ounce surge wool. That's what firefighters uniform pants were made of at one time. And they wear them in San Francisco and Oakland and other places. Um, and used to go into structure fires like that. Um, they put on a turnout jacket and, and wear the wool pants. Um, uh, Nomex, Kevlar, PBI, the flame resistant materials, that's what firefighters wear or have, you know, pilots, um, air, air crew in, in, uh, in the military um, and on. They're, they're, uh, it works. It's it's some it's somewhat hot to wear, but it's and it's available online. Yeah, you can buy these things. You can get Nomex uh, online if you go to just Wildwood Fire Supply. You could buy an outfit, but that's that's a little extreme, maybe. Um, the other the other said uh, um, to to just get avoid the synthetics. Okay, no polyester or other lower body pants. Long long. Legged pants, obviously. Um, they're gonna show just, you know, even jeans uh, are made of cotton. They're, they're uh, pretty comfortable. Everybody likes wearing jeans, but, but that's better than nothing on your legs. And the other, you have Nomex again, the other, but, uh, and, and then the three, uh, the different materials, there are types that, that, are, that are protective, their degree of protection. All right, back down to boots, footwear, something sturdy. No sandals, okay. Um, that's uh, some with closed toes, toes, you know, that we're showing there's obviously forestry boots or riding boots or you can wear hiking boots. Um, but if you're stuck, you just something, uh, your, your, your tennis shoes, probably some rubber soles. If you have to get out and the pavement's hot or the ground you have to cross is hot. Um, and, and like we always say as firefighters, your, your safest place when you're, when you're in a burn area or you're in a wildfire is, is in the black, meaning what's already burned. 
you want to move towards what's already burned and stay out of the green area because that's where you're going to get caught. So if you don't have footwear that allows you to do that, you're probably going to get burned feet. Especially if you step in a hot hole that's just full of uh, coals or ash at, at that point. Okay, the other thing I included here was just the safety visibility alerting warning devices, a whistle to, to, to alert somebody to your location. If it's if it's smoky or dark, it's night, a flashlight so you can see any torch. Most of these things, the whistle, four dollars, you know, Walmart. The uh, the other one's got a compass on it, which I don't in smoke you can get disoriented and lost in which ways. Most of us have our phones that have GPS on them or compass. Um, an air horn, even a small air horn, what you know, what is that, twelve dollars? Um, and I, I like the uh, the safety strobe. That's a, that's a good item, which can clip on to something. All these have a lanyard or some way to clip them. Um, the other, some more, the green lighted one is a more sophisticated um, guardian angel. That you can that they, they sell that for public safety people. I don't know how much it's being used or where exactly, but but I, I found it online and it's it's not really it's probably ninety nine dollars somewhere around there. Um, but it clips onto the, your your jacket or your shirt, and uh, it has different alerting capabilities as well as the flashlight possibility. A lot of us think our phones are going to do our flashlight for us. That's that's not that's not the best thing to be using for uh, nighttime visibility or to be seen. That's another thing with a with a hand light. You can you can see and you can be seen. Um, on on the uh, coalition website, if you go to the link in education resource, there'd be time to. I'd, I'd advise to watch this video again. It's this was taken in Australia last year, and uh, most of their firefighters are volunteer in, in their bush areas in their wildland areas, which is which is pretty amazing. Consider the amount of fire they have to deal with. Um, uh, the, this is a crew that's in their engine, and they are proceeding through a fire area, much like the Ember Stream in the first picture you saw. And they, they're deploying a fire blanket to, to, while, while they're while driving along. The, the, the driver's on the right in their vehicle, obviously, because it's, it's Australia. But they, they're, and they're, they're very calm about it. They're talking about what they need to do. And they're, what they're protecting themselves from is radiant heat. Now, if, if you're out in an area, I'll say evacuation, the roads get backed up and here comes the fire. And you, you're, you're pretty safe in your vehicle, except for radiant heat. The fire will blow through the air. It's not going to explode your car. It's not going to catch it on fire right away. You have, you have lots of time and you have air to breathe. You shut your vents off, you turn off the recirculation, and you get below the windows. You get down in the car. Um, and if, if you can't, then you need to cover yourself with something to, to and that's where your wool blanket comes in, you know, your, your, your surplus wool blanket. Just something to stop the radiant heat from, from getting your skin. Um, if you're outside the vehicle, you have to find a barrier or object, something that you can get behind your car. And that's where um, I think in my last photo here, this is if uh, <laughs> if Chief Mathias was here, he'd say, my guys would never be in that position. I've been in that position. I've been down in San Bernardino. I got burned over like that. Well, we, we never even got back into the vehicle. We had, we had to, and they're using what they're using that vehicle to shield themselves from convected and radiant heat. And that is pretty much the end of uh, my presentation there.